Thank you, everybody. Are you good? The kids are delighted I to am. see you. They really are. Love it. That that film looks very, very intense. The Into the West. Is it a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, historically accurate comedy. It's about time. Um, yeah, I would have thought. No, it's uh, not. It's not. A, no. The, so it looks like something bad was about to happen to the your mom yeah. in that scene. Yeah. There's... I don't want to give away the whole thing, but. Well. There was this thing called the Massacre of Lawrence, Kansas, and um, pretty much everyone in the town dies. So it's not a comedy, then? <laughs> no, that, that would be... Do you like doing the comedies? Do you like doing... What about Josie and the Pussycats? That, that was, was a, a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 That was a lot of fun. I'd love to do more comedies. Was, but, there, uh, was there a Pussycat in it? I, I missed that one, so I don't know. I don't think there were. There, there no, were real cats first. What about a pussycat that goes nuts and kills everybody? I don't know. <laughs> yes and yes. You, could you write it? Um, Could we no, but I guy? know a prawn who's pretty funny. <laughs> Did you ever work with a Muppet? Sorry about that. You ever, you ever been with a Muppet? No, I've not been with a Muppet. I mean, uh, I didn't mean that. I meant, you no, know, have you ever, well, have you? I mean, no, no, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Do it again. I was naughty. No, I'm kidding. Um, it was really weird when they told me that Pepe was going to be here today because I had probably my worst audition ever for the Muppet movie that he's a star of that's are, coming are, out soon. You, are you in that Muppet movie? I'm really not. And let me tell you why. Because, um, okay, well, first, it was just one of those days. Like, I don't like being late. So I leave, you know, a good 15 minutes before any normal person would to even be more than on time. At the audition you're going Exactly. To. Right. But the universe was just against me and put a world of traffic between myself and the studio, and it was just a mess. So I'm running across the lot, mm -hmm. trying to get there. Um, I'm on time, which is wildly unacceptable because I really need to center need myself to early. Exactly. Right. So I'm smelling, I'm sweating. It's just a You're terrible. You're smelling. I, I. Well, you know, you. Mm, you, you didn't wash. You got to wash before the audition. I was That's running. A, oh, I see. So I wouldn't I'm smell running much. You probably smell like oh. lovely flowers or something. No, really. Okay, well, let's get past that then. <laughs> So I finally got there, and it was just, well, let's just say that the producers, who are lovely people, were mm -hmm. under the impression that I can sing because of some work that I've done in the past. Josie and the Pussycats. You sang in that movie. That's right. So uh, they say, like, could you just sing a couple bars of the song because the person is a, uh, an aspiring singer right. in this Muppet film. Yeah. That's usually the way in the Muppet yeah, film, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And uh, let's... Let's just say I'm not Muppet material. <laughs> you, you sang a little Leave bit and they that. didn't think that you were... I just really? totally... It was just a bad scene. Oh, man. W was Peppy there? I'm just sad. I don't even want to talk about uh, it. Do you want to talk about that really bad thing that happened in Kansas? Uh, that might cheer you up. <laughs> no, 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 Peppy was there. Peppy was there? Did he hit on you? That is a horny prawn, man. I'm I know. Telling. And I see him today, and I was like, hey, good to see you again. And didn't he even didn't even remember you. me. Yeah, I know. Don't you hate it when that yeah. happens? But, you know, it's not just shellfish that do that. Everybody in Hollywood does that. <laughs> really, it's just people don't recognize you. It's true. It's true. I hardly remember who I am some mornings. <laughs> no, not anymore. I'm all right. <laughs> so listen, you're, you're, you're an actress. You live in Hollywood? You're not from here, though, are you? I'm from Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Yeah. Where in, you're Scottish, but where no, from? No, 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 no. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> I'm from Scotland, yeah. Cool. Like Glasgow? Or? Glasgow, yes. A town called Glasgow in Scotland. It's very like Minneapolis in many ways. How so? Well, Prince lives there. <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah, yeah. He spends his time between Minneapolis and Glasgow. That he wrote Raspberry Parade about a parade in Scotland. Although it was Raspberry Beret. Yeah, yeah. But, but, it, was, but it was about there a parade when he a first follow. wrote it. The first draft was about a parade. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just picturing a raspberry parade. <laughs> Hey, or I had a talking brawn here five minutes ago. <laughs> we could easily have a raspberry parade. Um, so what do you, you do in your spare time then when you're not actressing? <laughs> uh, let me see. I don't... Oh, God, don't you hear when people ask you that you feel no, like... Not really. Spot? I'm quite happy to say me, I get drunk and go to Mexico. Uh, 
You do, do you ever do that? Um, no. no. What about go to Mexico, get drunk, come back? That's, I think, the way to go. That's probably the best way to do it. And not end up in jail. No, well, just behave yourself. Be on time. That sounds good. Be on time. It's just lovely to meet you. Thank you oh, so God, much so for nice coming in. Rachel Lee Cook, everybody. We'll be right back with Chuck Palahniuk. Welcome back, everybody. All right, all right. Welcome back. I'm here with the lovely Fiona Apple. What, what a lovely album this is, Extraordinary Machine. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. What does that mean, then, the title of this thing, Extraordinary Machine? Um, it, sometimes I write songs, most of the time when I write songs, um, like, I think that I get this reputation because it's true that I write all these songs that are very angry towards people and it's all about, you know, trying to seem like I've got it all under control. And they're all just really, you know, it, it's, it's not true. I never feel like that when I'm writing the songs. They're all kind of pep talks. And so, um... So you're you kind of trying and, to but they end up they end up, like, kind of coming true later on. Like, after, like, a year or two, I'll, they'll finally, I'll finally actually feel as strong as I did when I tried to pretend that I was that strong when I wrote the song. You're a very complicated woman. I don't, I don't usually and have to... And I like that. I don't, I don't really have to... I don't usually have to do this talking thing. So I, I got to tell you, you are the best talking musician I've ever talked to. <laughs> it's true. Usually music, musicians come out and they go, uh, there's a G in it. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I wrote it because I was sad. I tend to have a lot of, uh, the, it's called Extraordinary Machine because that was kind of like my um, hopeful pet name for myself. You call your, I thought you maybe had an extraordinary machine, like something that could make waffles and... No, like, give me, like, no, like, like, give me anything, be mean to me, do whatever, anything, life hit me with whatever, and I will, it'll go through me, and it'll come out into something nice. Wow. That is an extraordinary machine. <laughs> is that, is that happening? What if people are nice to you? What are you going to do then? What if I say you're beautiful, talented, clever, you demand respect and should have it? What are you going to do with that, girlfriend? Well, here's now I'm going to start talking like the musicians that you talked to before. I don't, I don't understand that language. No, I, that's the, I, yeah, no. Does I'll, all art come from angst then? No, no, I really don't think so. Mm, then how would you write the extraordinary machine stuff? Well, I had angst then. But, yeah. But, oh, well... How are you going to write now you're happy? Am I scaring you? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm scaring myself. No, I figure... Well, maybe it's true. Maybe you need to be sad. Maybe you do. But yeah. I don't think so. I think that... But don't, here's what I think, though. Okay. I only write when I'm angry or sad or something because that's when I just have to write. And I only will work if I absolutely have to. Me if too, I'm having yeah. a good time... And if I'm having a good time and I'm happy and things are going really well, yeah. why would I want to stop what I'm doing to go and write at the piano? You are, yes, absolutely right. I feel that, I feel that about this. Do you find, because I feel, come, when I come out here and I talk to folks, it cheers me up. Does, does writing cheer you up? Yeah, it cheers me up, but the worst feeling in the world, for some reason, is like, and this has been happening since I was like eight years old and I would write little songs and I would be so excited and I'd get like my mom to come in and listen to them. Yeah. And as soon as I would be done playing the song, I would get so depressed and I still don't understand it. It's just like a letdown. It's like, I, I, I guess I expect, you know, somebody to hear it and then the world just becomes bigger and brighter all of a sudden because yeah, I've no, played this song out loud for the first time. But it's no, no, that's, that I, you're confusing that with drugs. It's drug. <laughs> oh. Whole different thing. And very bad for you, you know. <laughs> writing songs, good. Drugs, no. No. Mustn't. Now listen, do you take part in all the rock and roll culture? Do you... I almost thought you said, do you take part? Sorry. Do you take part? <laughs> do you? Come on, do you? Do you take part? Come on, you do, don't you? Do you? Uh, let me phrase it I'm another way. I'm fond of the color green. Right, right. Do you have glaucoma? Yes. Ah, I see. Well, do you take part in all the rock and roll lifestyle, though? Do you go to the Roxy and take your top off and dance on the table and stuff? I hardly ever leave my house or my neighborhood. 
really. And that's not a sad thing. That seems like it's a sad thing. No, I, I, just, I, I think it's I, sad. I got everything I need. I got my handful of friends and my handful of nice places that I like to go. And that's really enough for me. I don't, I don't, um, I don't. What about touring? Do you ever go and do that? I like touring. Yeah? I love touring. But I love... only in your neighborhood. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's like... Tonight, live from my next door neighbors. <laughs> it's like the trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Fiona Apple. Want a concert? <laughs> Fantastic! That's a good idea. You can make a lot of money doing that. People wow. like, I don't know, you could. <laughs> or at least cookies. You'd get cookies. <laughs> it would be fantastic. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's something in it. Okay. All right, we'll work on it. You want to open for me? Yeah, all right. I'll go and do, I'll do the first bit. I'll do the kind of, hey, no, I want to do that. You, you want to do that? Yeah. Well, I'll do the open. I'll do the, hey, where are you from, sir? Or all that kind of okay. stuff. And then you come out and be good. Okay. <laughs> We're out of time. Fiona, you are enchanting and, and talented and beautiful. Um, please come back to our show anytime. I will. I Fiona will. Apple, everybody. Good night. Please welcome Hannah Storm, everybody. You look oh. sensational. Look at Thank you. You're Thank you. Look at your well, fork. I... You've gone to Hollywood. Well, you look good, too. You've well, I've had my own tie. Do you like your it? Your tie is a little... <laughs> look at that. I thought it was tucked in earlier. Yeah. Very... Yeah. Very attractive. It is, isn't it? You actually have Notre Dame colors on. You have blue and gold on, which is so thoughtful of oh, you. Oh, yeah, because you wrote a book about I, Notre yeah, Dame. Because I, yeah, just, you know, get the book plug right, out of the way. Who the hell and you is gave, that on the I back have no there, idea. Right? That is hours of hair and makeup right there. Really? That's, 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 that's <laughs> lovely. It's like there's a wind machine. It's like, yeah, you know, there is. That's how they do that. That's they also how they do Van Halen do videos this. as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, are you okay? I mean, because your charger's lost. Oh, they're not my chargers. If I had the chargers, I wouldn't be here, my friend. I, uh, no, you, you would pick them to go all the way, I had picked Ryan, them to go all the way to the Super Bowl, but... So, are, uh, you, are you upset? No, I think it's good. I, think, I mean, the emotional favorite has to be the Saints, so I'm thinking, well, if the Saints go and do it, that's fine. Oh, so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like the Bears. So that's yeah, but you, Chicago, you picked right? the Bears. Did well, I, I, what I do is I tend to pick about a dozen teams every okay. season. <laughs> I'm getting the picture. Yeah, see, that's my, that's my system. You know, about uh -huh. a dozen teams, and then you'll be fine. Now you have a really scientific way of picking these teams, right? Yeah, yeah, I, on the logos. Yeah, just based the on the logos. logos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now how does that how does that work? Let's what? take Colts and Patriots because the Patriots got that kind of crazy it's, Patriot it's, guy. Don't you want to talk about the damn book? <laughs> I'm just fascinated by your method. Well, I, well, what I do is I get the, you know, like the Colts Patriots, like yeah. a Colt would be, you know, their logo is like, a, like, a, 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 like a horse, like that. Yeah, and the like Patriots is what, like thing. a hat or something? No, it's like a weird Patriot guy, and then the Colts is like a horseshoe. Yeah, the, yeah the, the Patriots guy is kind of like some drag queen in a hat. And then they, uh, <laughs> is that wrong? <laughs> And so that's that's what it is. No. So I no, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Who's going to yeah. win? Who's I, no, I think win? the Colts are going to win at home. Right. Because their defense is playing great. They're mm -hmm. at home. They haven't lost there sure. all season. And the Bears are going to win. Peyton Manning due for a good game. Bears are at home. Yeah. You know, to Bears. You're a Bears fan, aren't you? Yeah. I was ah, I got you to admit that you are a Bears fan. Could you? Yeah. So I think they're going to. I think they're going to be great if Rex Grossman, you know, kind of doesn't lose a game for him. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. That's right. Why is your so name Storm? You. Why shouldn't you? Oh, because I was a DJ. Really? Because I thought yeah. it's, a, it's like a weather person's name, Storm. I know it is. This is like, I know over the weather with Hannah Storm and everybody, rainy showers. Yeah, yeah, everybody says that. But I wanted to be a sportscaster when I got when I graduated from Notre Dame, and I couldn't get a job. Nobody really wanted to hire a woman. So then I looked in the one ads, yeah. and I got a job as a heavy metal rock and roll DJ in Corpus Christi, Texas. This was in a this was in a oh, one yeah. ad? Huh? This yeah. was a one ad? Yeah, it was a one ad in Broadcasting Magazine. Oh, right. You know, they okay. were looking for DJs. And so I faked the tape, and I got a job. And so I had to work at this little station that was in the middle of... <laughs> what? Hey, what are you nice. laughing at? I, you're, you're, you're very cute. I'm laughing. Uh, I'm laughing with joy. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I could make yeah. you smile. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, you could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, uh, did you see my tie? Oh, I tied no, it myself. Oh, yeah. I saw your tie. Um, anyway... 
Come on, guys, please. Yeah. So anyway, here's the deal. The station was um, in the middle of this like farm country, and there and there were cows wandering around everywhere. And so to get that's farms in, for you. To, yeah. Many... So I would drive, you know, drive my car, and my shift was ten at night to two in the morning, and I would have to actually get out of my car, chase all the cows away from the gate, and then drive my car through the gate and shut the gate very quickly How before did you the, cows the cows. Would what did you do? They're with... really hard to scare. Yeah, the cows are they're cynical. They'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've seen it they all. They don't scare easy, the cows around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how so did you scare them? Hard, you know, it was hard. I, you know, then you just push them and shove Who's them out of the way. Right, okay. Yeah, you know, it was the most challenging part of the job. And then we, you know, we played, you know, Quiet Riot and Van Halen and the Scorpions and all that, back to back to back. So that and I was like, you know, Hannah Storm, Storm, and it was C101, so it was like nice. Storm by the are you, are you going down to the Super Bowl, Miami? Are you going to be there? Yeah, I am going yeah, to the yeah. Super Bowl. We are yeah. completely out of time. I am so sorry. Oh, okay. I, uh, I'll see you at the Super Bowl, I'll right? See you, I'll see you in Miami. Okay, Hello, great. matron. All right, right. then. Cut us all, everybody. We'll be right back with the company doing great. Welcome back, my frisky little ponies. My next guest... <laughs> My next guest is only 22 years old, but has already earned two Golden Globe nominations and an Emmy nomination for her television work. She co-stars in the new NBC epic, Hercules, which airs Monday night. Please welcome Lily Sobieski, everybody. Charming to meet you. Charming to meet you as well. Are you really? Are you really a princess? Is that right? Did I get that right? Um. Well, I don't know. It's a. It's a kind of crazy story about a baby in a bassinet. That's Moses you're thinking about. Well, that's what you would think. Right. But it's supposedly my ancestor, who was um, supposedly King Jan Sobieski, supposedly my great 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 uncle, who the bagel was invented for. Really? Yes. So you're you're the, you're the you're named after you're not named after a bagel. What wouldn't his name be Bagel? <laughs> no. no, no. He was a king of Poland. Yes. And someone invented the bagel for him. And In the shape of the stirrup of a horse's saddle. Well, that's not a bagel. Bagels, well, originally, ba originally round, it was in that shape. There was an evolution of the bagel. Or maybe a royal bagel is in the shape of Perhaps. this. Perhaps. I get no bagel royalties, though. <laughs> that would be a lot of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. that would be a lot of money. Well, um, how, well, how are you not sure if you're a princess or not? How, what's, the, what's the deal? Well, when the royals were fleeing Poland, there was a baby that was left in front of a church in the village. And that was village. you? No, this oh, was right, my right. ancestor. All right. And it was covered in um, royal cloaks and covered with jewels. And it said, I'm the descendant of this king. Please use these jewels to raise me with love. And, and that, that was my descendant. Really? And, that, and you were raised by that. So you might conceivably then, if Poland says, you know, we've been thinking about this republic thing. It hasn't really worked. Uh, we'd like a royal family back. They could give it to you. I have an older sister that I would have to kill first, and then lots of other people. Well, in, in royal circles, that's all right. That's perfectly acceptable to advance Absolutely. yourself by killing a sibling. That's a the little bit of done. incest. But, okay. In the yes. royal family. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Fine. I'm not sure. Have you ever been to Poland? Never. You've never been to Poland? I've never been. Really? No, I really want to go, but I've never been. Oh, do you play the accordion, maybe? No, I don't. I'm half French, but I don't. Oh, well, I don't know why I said I thought the Poland had something to do with accordions. Maybe it's the sausage I'm thinking of. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps it's the sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the <laughs> You're half French. Mm -hmm. They kick the royals out as well, though. You better be careful. I, I have to be very careful. It's very uh, dangerous for me wherever I go. Yeah, so where did you grow up? You grew up in France? Uh, I grew up in New York and uh, a little bit in the south of France in an area called Camargue which is really beautiful, which has um, wild white horses and pink flamingos that take off over the highway and castles and tons of mosquitoes that loved me a lot. You know what you need to get if you're in a place with a lot of mosquitoes? A frog. That's what you need. Did you, did you meet Kermit backstage? I, I didn't. I really wanted to meet Kermit. But we had little boxes that we would carry around with us that had the noise of dragonflies. Oh, this to make is in, the mosquitoes this is in, this go is in away France. In yeah. France. Yeah. But if I maybe carried Kermit around with me, 
then he would be my prince and he would eat all the mosquitoes and take very good care of me. You know, it's one way to find out if you're a princess is to kiss Kermit and if nothing happens then you're not. If Kermit wants to come out here, I'm more than happy to. I, I think he's actually left, he's got some premiere tonight or something, it's some, <laughs> some big thing. Maybe he'll get kissed thing. by another princess. Th th that could, no, that's not going to happen in L.A. <laughs> So you're doing the... Uh... Listen, I have to tell whoa, you something. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do it this... again, do it again, do it again. I have this dirty joke that I wanted to tell. You have a dirty joke? I had a, yes, because I had a dirty joke I wanted to tell, but I was told that it was perhaps a little bit too dirty. For this show? Have you been show. watching this show? Well, this is my question. All right, well, go, go ahead, tell your dirty you joke. Think it, it kind of ties in with animal, fake animal creatures story type thing. Then don't. Don't. No, no, no. There are no, no bad words in it. I took them all out. You tell, tell your joke. Tell your joke. Are you sure? Is it a long joke? It's a little bit long, but it's good. I hope. We'll see. That's all always right. a bad introduction to a joke. Yeah, it, but yes, but you're a princess. You're not a stand up. Go ahead. All right. I don't have to stand up. Okay, good. No standing up. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, and it's done with a southern accent because I've decided Little Red Riding Hood is from the south, but she's not. Anyway. Right. It's about Little Red Riding Hood, and she's hopping through the woods. Is she a frog in this or she's just no, hopping? No, she's just hopping because right, you right. hop in the woods. Right, right. She's hopping in the woods and all of a sudden the big bad snake comes out of a tree. Big bad snake? No. It's in my joke, all, all right? right the big right. bad snake comes out of a tree. The bad snake says, Little Red Riding Hood, you better not go visit that big bad wolf because he's going to play with your <laughs> And Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. And so Little Red Riding Hood, she passed her picnic basket and she says that's all right i'm well protected thank you yeah. and she hops along hops along right. all of a sudden the big bad bear comes out of the woods yes the big bad bear says little red riding hood you better not go visit that big bad wolf because he's gonna play with you i thought he might say that yeah. <laughs> i think riding i've spotted hood, a pattern little here riding hood, she opens her picnic basket and she shows that she has a semi-automatic shotgun hidden inside uh -huh. and she says that's all right. I'm well protected. Thank you. Yeah. And she hops along, hops along, and she gets to the Big Bad Wolf's house, and she knocks on the door. The Big Bad Wolf opens the door, and he says, Little Red Riding Hood, you best come in here. I'm going to play with you. Yeah. And Little Riding Hood, she takes out a shotgun, and she points at the Big Bad Wolf, and she says, No, Mr. Big Bad Wolf, you're going to me like the good story says. <laughs> I've learned from that joke. Yes. You tell a long joke, you don't get to plug your movie. And the second thing is, and the second thing is, I don't think you really are a princess. No longer. No, no, no. no. But, but, but it's just lovely. because you're royal doesn't mean that you're a good person or anything like that. You can well, be a really I, uh, dirty, scandalous royal. Those no, exist. I don't think you are. I think you're a lovely girl. And, oh, and good you. luck with the. Uh, do you, you don't play Hercules in the movie, do you? I know? don't. I would be Herculesa, but uh, no. Yeah. I play a, a golden nymph from a tree. They spray painted me gold every morning. I look forward to seeing it. I hope you watch it. All right. All Lily right. Sobieski, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Kaylee DeFerre, everybody. Lovely, you look so demure and lovely Aww. and ladylike. You don't talk like that in your real life, do you? Absolutely. Really? Let me tell you. Really? I, I, you seem very kind of. I mean, how are your parents about you playing such a. Well, that's funny because my mom, right before I went up, she goes, Now, Kaylee, please watch your mouth. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Wait, what, here? No, yeah, about the show tonight. No, that wasn't your mom. That's a CBS no. censor. They follow me around exactly the same thing all the time. Watch your mouth. I know. She yeah. kind of looked like my mom's Yeah. Face. Are you having a nice time on that show, The War at Home? Michael Rappaport's on that. He's all right. Yeah, he's him. Yeah. No, he's, sorry, he's, he's great. He's all right. No, I got, I got, he, he was w w outside kind of pacing around saying, now you be nice to Kaylee. Seth MacFarlane called me last night from Family Guy. He said, no, be nice to... It's weird talking to Seth MacFarlane on the phone. I know. Sounds like Brian the dog. The dog. I 
I know. Right? I, I know. And he calls you up and he goes, it's Brian, what? It's weird. Yeah, he called me last night and said, I've got to be nice to you. And then you met my buddy Lenny at uh, the weekend, is that right? Yeah, I met Lenny this weekend. And yeah. It's who just nobody so knows funny. at all. Yeah, yeah. Lenny, Lenny um, for those of you who don't know him, he's actually, he's a hypnotist, right? And so he, he told you? Yeah, he yeah, told yeah, me he's yeah. a hypnotist. Okay. And so I let him, you know, I let him um, hypnotize me because I've been feeling a little stressed. And You let Lenny hypnotize you? I let you? Lenny hypnotize me and I woke up and I'm madly in love with him now. It's amazing. <laughs> and I think we're going to get married very soon. Really? And Yeah. yeah you you got to be very careful. <laughs> Now, I, I don't know, I've got to tell you, all of my friends are jerks, and Lenny is one of them. <laughs> right. Uh, so you've got to be very careful. He's sitting right up there I've at the been... back. I see him right there. Yeah, you got, <laughs> yeah, there you got a show of Lenny up there. See that, Lenny? Yeah, that's, that's Hi, Lenny sweetheart. right up there. Yeah. How are you doing? Lenny, what? <laughs> hey, stop following this young girl around. He never comes to this show. He doesn't. No, no. Ah, well, that's my love right there, you know, I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, well, <laughs> frankly, I think you can do better. Now, what about the... Uh, what about the Hollywood? Are you, you're not from around here, are you? No, from... no, I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, when did you come here? About four years ago, actually. Is it a big difference? I've never been to Tucson. Is it very like Hollywood? <laughs> it's, it's quite opposite of <laughs> what Hollywood. Happens? What do you do out in Tucson? What's the um, recreation? It's funny. You know, I, I call my friends, and, you know, they're off in college now, and... I ask him, you know, what, what, am I, what am I missing out on out, out in Tucson? And, and every weekend they, they tell me just a lot of partying and drinking and, you Doesn't know, craziness. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, four years later I call him up and it's the same thing over and over and over again. So, I mean, you know, they're doing their thing out yeah. there, but I'm... Uh, you do, don't you get involved in the Hollywood partying and craziness? Haven't you been... Uh, have you got a tattoo you had around then? I do. You do I do have a tattoo? I do have a tattoo. You do not. I do, and I heard that you got one this weekend. Recently, yeah, it's right? kind of scratchy. Soon... Did yours get scratchy? It did, you know, and it takes a while to heal All as right. well. Okay. And I unfortunately got it in a position right here on my rib cage. And I walked in and I was like, okay, so this is where I want it because it's easy to cover and not very many people will see it. Right. And and she goes she goes, All right, great. So you've had a tattoo done before and I go, No. She goes, you're ridiculously ballsy to get a tattoo on your ribs yeah, for your first one. Yeah, it would sweat. really hurt. It was very painful. Yeah, well, it'll stop you getting another one, though, so that's not a bad idea. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Now I know not to, you know, to stay away you, from bones Can I ask you what it is, or is it personal? No, no, yeah. Um, it's actually a quote by Mother Teresa. It's one of her prayers for yeah. the orphanage. And, you know, it's just something that I've, I've kept close to my heart. Okay, are you able to read it from there? Um, uh, <laughs> You, you know, can maybe just like put it on your you know, refrigerator, exactly. and then you're gonna see it right away. It's like, what is that again? I, I yeah, I have I have a difficulty seeing it. I kind of you know yeah, have yeah, to yeah. twist a bit, but that's the point. So, and you know, I saw the the clip of you in the Playboy bunny outfit. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank Absolutely. you. I I you know what? I work out. And the tattoo. You know, it looks like it's healing nicely. Yeah, yeah, it's doing okay. It's kind of uh, festering well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, it's funny because there was a clip of um, Danny Bonaducci, right? Right after? Yeah, uh, Prince Harry. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, Prince right. Harry. And um, he has the same one as you, it looks like. Danny Bonaducci <laughs> has my name tattooed on his ass. Does he really? <laughs> That's true. Really? Really, really. I did him a favor once and then as payment. I'm so thrilled. He got my name tattooed that, on his ass. That is just so fortunate. Isn't it and beautiful? It is a beautiful thing. It is. Listen, we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You. You're it's lovely on the show, and, you, and it's lovely that you came to visit. Please come back. Thank you. Can we defer, everybody? We gotta go. Please welcome Melinda Clark, everybody. Welcome. Don't you look lovely? Oh, thank you. you just, thank just you. Just gorgeous. How are you? Pulled it together. It you wasn't, did. It you wasn't did happening well. today, but it, but it did come together. No, we <laughs> no. We should tell the folks right away. You're from Orange County, but you have no association with Al Qaeda whatsoever, do you? Hmm. Uh, no, no. No. Exactly. No, 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 no. <laughs> You, are, are you actually from Orange County? Or you I just am. Play I, someone from I grew Orange? up in a little town called Dana Point, and which is uh, oh hey. See, now, growing up, nobody ever knew where Orange County was. It was this nice little quiet secret, and now the whole world. 
Orange County was a nice little quiet secret. For, for me, I mean, right. I remember my friends, my acting buddies never, I mean, during the riots, we all just picked up and went down to my parents' house and sat on the beach for four days. Is it, is it like the OC in Orange County? Is everybody fabulously wealthy and thin with good abs and big eyebrows? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. No, no, I mean, it wasn't the world that I grew up in, but, but since doing this show, I've, I've actually met the entire cast of the OC. Meaning the real life people. The, the it it exists. Really like it exists, and I and I had no idea that that it that it did exist, but it does. So, what part of Orange County did you grow up in then? The wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, no. Apparently, you know, Orange County is supposed to be this kind of conservative Republican. You know, that that's been the history. But yeah. my mother always thought that she was the only liberal Democrat in the entire county. So, you know, they were very frugal. They were very, um, you know, I had to, you know, save up money to buy my own car, that kind of thing. But you uh, poor thing. How did I you know. Yeah. My dad wanted to really. Jeez, you poor. Save up your. Buy your own car. Good I know. Lord. You know. Jeez. It was a '64 Volvo. Come yeah. on. It's a car. <laughs> I'm from <And> Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sheep. <laughs> I no. I, I actually. Do you know this about Orange County? That Orange County has the biggest Scottish Highland Games in the world. Even even including Scotland. Every year they have a massive Highland Games. What's that? Uh, it's, you know, a men in skirts running around throwing trees at each other. Oh, it's fantastic. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a new one to me. Yeah? Yeah. You like that? Yeah, men in skirts with big logs. Oh. <laughs> uh, Wait, what? So, what? so, you, you, uh, I, you, you ever made a zombie movie? <laughs> Have you ever made a zombie movie? You know... I did, actually. It's funny you should ask. Really? Do you, now, do you like zombies? Because Bruce Campbell was on. I thought he would like zombies, and he was very angry about something else. Uh, uh, <laughs> did, uh, were you, do you like zombies? You know, i gotta be, I got to be honest. I, I'm not a huge fan of horror films. Maybe it's just, you know, blood, something like that. But I, I did. I actually got to play the zombie in a movie. A girl zombie. Yes, Ooh, she nice was a twist. Little, yeah. yeah, she was like the punker rebel girl. A punk zombie. Who became a zombie and right. had to have the brains. The brain what do you mean had to have the brains? L like like a drug addict had oh, to have eat the eat brains. Yeah. yeah, oh eat brains. You know, basically it was bananas and, and caro syrup and that kind of thing. But, Is but it tasty? Was it nice? No, it was gross. All right. But all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Return of the Living Dead Three. Uh, I'm so happy to be telling this story. <laughs> no, that's nice. It's nice. So, do you like zombies? I, I do like a zombie movie. I like the new faster zombies. I like the, you know, um, the, what was that? The, the one with the, the zombies in London that ran really fast. Uh, 28 Days Later. That was a great zombie. Is the zombies a... were like lightning in that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, the, the, you know, CGI. Yeah, yeah. like C made them really fast. CGI, okay. exactly. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's elect electric zombies. They, make, right. they, they draw them in later. Right. It's good. Right. Do you have a kid now, though? Do you let them watch zombie movies? <laughs> I have a five-year-old. I dress her up like a zombie every day. Do you, do you, have, <laughs> you do have a five-year-old? I do have a five-year-old, and uh, that's, that's why I say I'm just lucky to be here, because she started kindergarten yesterday. And it's, like, it's like I'm going kicking and screaming into adulthood. I feel like I'm still, uh, you know, 25, and, which I am. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> But now I feel like I have to actually get up. I've taught my daughter to be a sleeper, so a sleeper, she sleeps yeah. in, and I can get her to sleep, you know, 12 hours no matter what time I put her to bed. Now I have to get up at 7 a.m. every morning for the next, what, 13 years? Oh, my God. It's, it's like saving up for your own car. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, this is, you know, I tell this to parents, and they think I'm an... My kids get up at 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah, my, my son's up earlier than 7 a.m., I've got to tell you. Apparently, kids actually get up early. I didn't yes, know that. they do, yeah. Maybe it's a little too much of the infant Tylenol. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mommy, can I have some more wine? No, no, no. So, so your, what's your daughter's name? Her name is Catherine Grace. But she just started kindergarten. Yesterday. Oh, my goodness. CG is yeah? her name. Has yes. she brought uh, home any, uh, any artwork? She brought home nothing today. She said, guess what, Mom? I have no homework today. And I'm so happy because I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> they get them started very young now. My son has lots of art projects, yeah. computer things, you know, math. <laughs> oh. He's very, very, very bright. Did she, yours do math? Well, mine does. She actually, um, <laughs> you know, she actually um, built a satellite. Built a satellite, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, out of little uh, egg cup holders. Right. Yeah, my son uses radio transmitters in uh -huh. his hair. <laughs> Do you think she parents uses are too... my, She yeah. uses my fake eyelashes. And yeah, she yeah. Can make anything. My out of son them. doesn't use my fake eyelashes. No way, girl. <laughs> no way. We don't have time. It's lovely to meet nice with you. Meet you. Linda Clark, everybody. We'll be right back. With Flight of the Concord. Please welcome Rachel Nichols, everybody. <laughs> I like it. Oh yes, they're very, they're very happy to see you. As am I. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, what a lovely dress you're wearing. Oh, thank you very That's much. That's a lovely yeah. belt. I often wonder when the ladies wear belts on the dresses. To hold everything in. Re what, 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 what? <laughs> you don't look. Well, like you know, it makes you feel like you're just keeping it all together, which is, you know, nice. That, that's why I wear mine. Keeps the nerves down. <laughs> it's just well it, done. Well done. Help yourself. You Come on, help yourself. At CBS, everything's free. I'll keep that in mind. Just as long as you watch the commercials, we're good. All right. No uh, now, how, tell me about the movie. What's it called? Resurrecting the Champ? Resurrecting the Champ. Yeah? yeah. What's that about? Um, it's about a sort of a down-on-his-luck reporter, yes. played by Josh Hartnett. Yeah. And um, the boxer that he finds living on the street after he was, you know, a world champion. So All right, so you guys... And then takes him out of this sort of obscurity of being a bum and writes this famous article about him and everything sort of mm. re-ravels, unravels from that point on. Is, uh, does Sylvester Stallone play the boxer? Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, he makes a cameo appearance. That's right. What did he say? Because I can never follow it. <laughs> you know, when he says, you know, yeah, he, actually, he actually doesn't talk in the movie. All right. he's, he's mute by Rocky Eight. He right, can't yeah. talk or speak or hear. So I didn't see, did you see the last one, the Rocky Balboa? I heard it was really good. I, I didn't. I, I heard it was really I, I good. I've done a boxing movie myself, and I thought, you know, I should really, really taint my opinion. Oh, yeah, of course. You're the one you're on to plug. And what about the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> do you like the boxing? Do you follow the boxing? Do you, you box know, I yourself? Actually, I don't box myself. Um, no, I don't mean box yourself. Like, take no, that. I, you know. I, myself, you know, yeah. I, I like to you know, stay away from fat lips and sort of right. bleeding and that kind of thing. Trauma to the head, never, never a good thing for communication purposes. But yeah. I do enjoy boxing, and uh, I like to watch a good fight now and then. Really? Do you like the boxing, or do you like the extreme, you know, uh, fighting, you know, the... Not so much for the extreme fighting. Really? There's a little bit too much blood, and, and I tend to feel really bad for the person getting killed. Yeah. Because <laughs> they are yeah, getting it's, it's kind the, of killed. It, well, it's they, a little it's a, There's a lot of, yeah, no, I don't... Do you go to boxing matches? Do you, actually, do you go to Vegas and watch the boxing? I've always really wanted to go and see a prize fight, actually. Right. But, um, you know, the only time I've, I've sort of gone to an event to watch a boxing match was when Tyson fought Lennox Lewis, and I went to the Playboy Mansion. That was my one and only visit to the Playboy Mansion. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> How did that go? I, I don't think they liked me very much because I was sort of fully clothed. I don't think they wanted me to come back. I think I was, you know, a little shy and I was wearing probably pants and a long sleeve turtleneck sweater. Not exactly That's the pasties I wore, and G-string. I, I, I wore that at the Playboy Mansion and they were fine. The pasties and the G-string? Yeah, long? yeah, I say, yeah. <laughs> By the end of the night, anyway, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that was where, that was the error of my ways. I, Totally should have worn do you clothes. do you go out to the Hollywood parties? Do you do all that kind of thing? Um, not so much. Occasionally, it's fun, right. but um, I'm I'm not a big go out and get drunk and drive my car drunk and. Well, you're drugs. never going to succeed in this town if you don't do I know. that. I really should just. I mean, this is nothing for you. I know. I've got. To, I should become a docent in yeah, a museum or something. Well, yeah, I know. You know what? You know what you should do is just occasionally, even though you don't need it, just pop into rehab. <laughs> Um, you know, very much a social fixture sort of oh, thing. Yeah, so I, I think it. I should really, Everybody's doing it, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. And I'm such a follower, I really should participate yeah. in that. And get a small dog that'll fit in my purse, or maybe ten small dogs. Get it. Fit in random places like pockets and everything. Take your dogs, get your dogs drunk, and they can take them to rehab. Little doggy is... <laughs> And owner simultaneous rehab. You get better together, and then you Doggy keep each other me. on the straight and narrow. Doggy and me rehab. That would do well in this town. I, I think you. it would do well. Yeah, in yeah. This town. <laughs> That's great. Are you? You're not from here, are you? You're not from. I'm. Here. I'm actually from Maine. 
Maine? Yes. Where? In, on the other side? On, on, on yeah. the complete other side of the yeah. country. Yeah, what do they do in Maine? Well, they have, uh, they got the, they got the Boston there, haven't they? That's, that's Massachusetts. That's not in Maine, yeah. yeah. Um, it's okay, it's okay. See, you know, the citizenship exam's looming and I think I'm in pretty good shape. I always say, you know, I know when I'm home in Maine for Thanksgiving because there's a deer hanging by its hind legs in my garage. Oh. My dad's a hunter, so... <laughs> I, I always know it's, you know, there's going to be a party at my place when I get home and there's a deer hanging by its hind legs. You, know, you and my dad would get along extremely well. I, I, don't, I don't hunt. I, I sometimes go out and, you know, use sarcasm on animals, but that's as far as I go. I don't actually hunt animals myself. You don't? Are you no. vegetarian? No. Have you ever I met one? I eat whatever he kills. Really? Yeah. Whatever he kills? Well, Even he's the greatest not going game out for skunk and... <laughs> The greatest game no, of all, man. I'm not no. eating human, I don't all right. think. Not so much. Sorry, I went I'm a bit born villain that there. Was, yeah, that was a little... Sorry. I mean, that would be wrong. He'd no. be in jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. have murdered someone if he was serving it for dinner. Yeah, but he's not. You know, it's fine. It's no, all right. So, dear yeah, me, yeah. you know... So, you're from Maine and you're... I'm you're, from Maine. And you go back there for Thanksgiving. I go back there for Thanksgiving and Christmas and sometimes in the summer. And, you know. what, was it, what was it like growing up in Maine? Did you have, you know, like a pony and, you know, pillow fights with your girlfriends? <laughs> Yeah, yeah with your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, we do that a lot, and um, we have lots of snow and lobsters and blueberries and snow and tractors. lobsters. That's that much. That's an odd combination. The lobs easy to spot in the Not snow. Not at the same time. <laughs> chilled them on ice so yeah, yeah. you know that sort of thing and actually um there's a lot of tractors and steel-toed boots and, and flannel yeah not on the lobsters no 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 we try to keep our lobsters yeah. naked because when you throw them in the pot they scream yeah, yeah. they don't actually scream you know that's no, not... but it's so much more fun to say because people get kind of weirded out by it yeah 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 well, I, i'm kind of weirded out by it right now <laughs> Uh, listen, it's lovely to meet you. We're completely out of time. Will you come back and see us another time? Anytime you want. Ah, God bless you. Rachel Nichols, everybody. We'll be right back with Pat Delaney. Eva LaRue, everybody. Show. Your excited. first nighttime show? Your it first is. Really? Wait, yeah. you never been on a talk show before? Oh, no, daytime talk shows. Oh, daytime talk shows. Yeah, the only difference is in daytime talk shows, the host wears a sweater at nighttime a jacket. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And we may have to do a cookery what about segment. Budgetary. Budgetary? Oh, you mean, do we have any... You guys have, have much more food, I think, back there. Really? And, and a full bar, and um, it's madness. It's fabulous. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's true. Well, we don't have any money because we spend it all on the full bar and the food. That's it. <laughs> so listen, to, I've been, I'm Googling this today, the CSI Miami. Do you know it's the most watched show in the world? In the world. In the world. Bigger than Baywatch. Yeah, I think we were second only to Baywatch yeah, yeah, after, yeah, yeah Baywatch yeah. fizzled out. and Because we've got bikini babes and we've got, you know, sex and... Oh, I know. Good colors. Well, <laughs> oh, I know what you have. I, I, I watched the show. Do you, now... Listen, do you, did you do any research into all of these things? Did you become a kind of... I, I got the job. I barely got the job. I missed the original audition because I was still contractually bound to another show that I was doing. And I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I missed the audition. And, I, and they said, if you're not here, this is the producer callbacks. It's gonna, we need to cast this thing right away. Right. So I, I just couldn't be there. I flew back to New York, which is where I was living at the time. And uh, the following day they said, we still haven't found the person. Can you run into New York City, put yourself on tape, and send it out here to California? So it was a Friday. I went in. I thoroughly messed up. The, the scene was, you saw. With that scene? Th that probably took me an hour and a half to, not that bad now, yeah. I actually, you know, have gotten used to it. But the What's it like working speed, with, uh, with uh, Gingery? With Ginger. Yeah, yeah. Caruso, is he all right? Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, He's like that. He's a total professional. Really? Does he do that a lot? He does this a lot. <laughs> does He's he got do a like, bit of a jig. Does, does he He's do that? Like... <laughs> no, I can't imagine David Caruso going, <laughs> Solve that. <laughs> Solve that. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, you said you were uh, living in New York. Are you from New York? Are you from LA? I am from LA. Really? But I lived in New York doing a soap opera for a long time. What was the soap opera? All My Children. I never miss it. Get out! 
I haven't seen them. Oh, my Dude, God. Now, soap opera you fans, so the, soap opera fans are very, very intense, aren't oh, they? They're, yeah. like, they're very loyal. They follow you around. You they come into your so house. so much happens. They, yeah. They come up. They hug you. They kiss you because they've been through all your trials and tribulations. I was married. I couldn't have a child. Then turns out that I'd had a child, and I had no, I had a sort of botched miscarriage slash whatever it was. I buried it in the backyard. Oh, it Lord. It came back to haunt me. I died in a fiery plane crash. I came back to life. I had amnesia Whoa. like all good soap characters should. I Jeez. was with a younger man, and then I married my ex-husband again and and then i went off is to this, california is, this is in the, this this is in the show oh yeah all right yeah. well oh soap oh, operas yeah, yeah, are a whole yeah, other yeah, thing yeah right. the soap operas behind the scenes well you imagine you're forced into a room with all see that's oh, what i yeah. think right all these good looking actors forced together for hours and hours uh -huh. at a time mm -hmm. Only bad can come of it. Yeah, Only well, you bad know, because they, they all, they all yeah. Yeah. So then you came out back to California. Then. Back to California. Well, where, where in California are you from? I'm from Norco, California. Norco, oh. I'll the, bet you the, don't know where it is. Oh, au contraire. No. <laughs> People from California don't know where Norco is. No, where is Norco? It's the smelly part on the 15 just as, as you're going by, you know, on your way to Palm Springs. If you get lost on the 15... You're, you're going to have to be more specific than the smelly part on the 15. <laughs> Going to Palm Springs, because that's a big stretch of smell. Yeah. Yeah. But have you ever been lost? I've, I've been lost? Between I'm glad I didn't bust it in these uh, black stiletto boots. No, I, I ain't got to tell you, you're the only mechanic I've ever met in my damn life that wears black stiletto boots. All right. No. Are you, you're not really a mechanic, are you? You're not, you're not a mechanic. I you're mean, just... on the overhaul and set, I sometimes am. Yeah? A little bit of a mechanic, sometimes a car fabricator, just jumping in, getting dirty, joining the action. Jumping in, getting dirty. Yeah. Sweet Lord. Uh, now, you don't... Forgive me, I don't mean to be, you know, leery or anything, but you, you, you don't look like someone that's heavily involved in automobiles. So how does that help you? You know, one of the interesting things that I found is that I feel like the people in the automotive industry actually are not at all chauvinistic. It's not that stereotypical kind of, like, pin-up girl thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's really respectful, and there's this, like, nice, cohesive, honoring vibe. I think it's really cool. Really? Yes. Well, that's, I know, it's no, hard to believe, but it's true. Lovely. It's not lovely and refreshing. Yes. So the stereotype of the guys in garages with a calendar of a girl up in the wall, that's not true. Except FHM. FHM, yeah. <laughs> in FHM kidding. magazine, there's pictures of you in here in a car wearing a bikini, women. I you had know. to do it. Yeah, oh, this. Do you, do you ever think... Do you ever... Oh, calm down. But they're tasteful, though. They are very tasteful, yeah. yes, they are. And I'm just... Bikinis are always tasteful, but the I... <laughs> but the poses are tasteful. The poses are tasteful. Yeah. Well, certainly there's nothing terrifying in there at all. You and dang it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what... Did you just say dang it? I said you were probably like, dang it. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I've never said dang it in my uh, life. Uh, I told you. Uh, I'm not a big dang it It's the most uh, Minnesota girl in me, I guess. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I'm just not from Minnesota. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to say dang it from now on. You are from Ireland. Uh, close. Yes, yeah, very, very oh, close. Oh, is this it? Scotland? Uh, yeah. I, I, actually, to listen to them, you think I'd be insulted that I was, you'd think I was from Ireland. And I'm not. Ireland's Don't a lovely mean, country. It's a lovely country. Um, I'm not from there, but it's lovely. Okay. Yeah. I'm from and Scotland. Scotland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. All right. That, I, if, normally, if a mechanic touched my leg, I would be out the door. Out the door. But, uh, but I feel strangely comfortable with you. Now listen. All right. Thank you. I have a. Uh, 1968 Ford Bronco truck. I heard that. Yeah, no, it needs a starter motor change. Do you think you can handle that? We could maybe help you out. Yeah, could you yes. pimp my ride? No, uh, no. we couldn't do that. We, we could trick you out. We could give trick, you a good you could, overall. You could yes. trick me out. What's yes. the difference between tricked out and pimping your ride? Well, tricked out and overhauling is, mm, yeah. is it's not just cosmetic. Right. It's these fantastic from the ground up rebuilds where everything is new, top of the line products, top of the line accessories, and mechanics. And, uh, Why don't you just buy a new car? <laughs> because this is like personalized, customized, right, right, right. one of a kind. What's your favorite so, car? Do you like the old muscle cars? Do you think? I love the old muscle cars. What's your favorite? Big, big fan of the Mustangs. Oh, big yeah. fan of the T-Birds. I'm a Ford girl. 
Yeah. I actually, I drive a, a modern day T-Bird, a 2004, but it was overhauled by Chip Hoos and the gang on overhauling. And so it's been tricked out. It's been very tricked out, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about the, uh, did you, I drove the, the new Mustang a couple of weeks ago. What'd you, you think? I... I wouldn't like to endorse a product on the... It's fantastic. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Oh. And see, so you can soup it up a little oh bit along the way. Oh, my God. Like, it's like... Ah! Yeah. Oh. I mean, cool looking, performs yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You can soup it up. None of us work for Ford, by the way. Let's just say we I don't know, work for Ford. I know, I yeah, know. Yeah. But you got to love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I like about car, the old muscle cars as well? See, I drive this Japanese car. It's very quiet. It goes... <laughs> and a motorcycle, though, and that's not I so quiet. I do ride a motorcycle. That's very noisy, yeah. Have you ever ridden a motorcycle? Yes, I have. I actually... Ever had an accident? You, heard, you read that. You yeah. read FHM. Yeah, I did yeah. read FHM. Yeah. <laughs> but you know I what? was like gazing at the bikini pictures. Went, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've never been in an accident when I was driving. I was a passenger on the motorcycle. Well, you, don't, you don't drive a motorcycle. You ride a motorcycle, Corny. I, I, exactly. Right. Ride a motorcycle. Right. I was on the back, though, and, uh, and the driver Wasn't wiped. And I got hurt. And she didn't, by the way. Right. So it was two girls on a motorbike in bikinis. Yes. <laughs> What a There's charming no idea image. for FHM. No. <laughs> well, listen, uh, welcome and thanks for coming on our show. It's Thank lovely you so to see you. Good luck with the overhauling show. It's lovely so to nice meet you. Courtney Hassan, everyone. Overhauling every week on the Learning Channel. We'll be right back.